In this video, I'm going to go through how to add your private methods and also what the purpose of putting these and marking them as private is. The main reason is, if you notice and look at our destroy action, update, create, edit, these all need to be accessed and can be accessed by other things such as an API or different parts of the application. You may want one, uh, one developer to connect to this application and be able to uh, call the create method and build out new tasks from a third party application. Now, one thing that you wouldn't want them to do is to touch your whitelist of your task params. You also really wouldn't want them to set the task and there'd be no purpose for that. That'd be kind of pointless. So, uh, because this is uh, querying the local database, which you would never let somebody do directly. So you mark any items that should only be used by this class as private so that's why we're putting both of these here so for set task i'm going to say task give it an instance variable and say task dot find and then find from the param so what this is going to essentially do when we say params id this is going to find the params of that page so if you go into the show page, for example, you're going to have tasks slash 15. It's going to look at the 15 number. It's going to put that as an argument in the find method. And just like if we popped up the console right now, which I'll do very quickly, and do Rails C, if I do a search for task find one, this is going to bring back the first task. And so that is essentially what this is doing. It's the same as if we did it in the console or anything like that, except here it's looking in the browser, it's finding the ID, and then it's passing that into this query, and then it's putting that in the instance variable. From there, because we have this before action, we're making it available to the show method, to the edit method, update, and destroy. So they're all available there. So that's what the set, set task method is doing. Now the next one, task params. This is a little bit more complicated. This is where we are going to take the different uh, attributes that we want the forms to be able to take in. So here we want to pass in the params method and say require and then from here this takes one argument and it's the table name and then from there we call the permit method on it and with permit that takes a number of arguments and it's any of the ones that we want to whitelist. So what do we want to whitelist? Off the top of my head, I don't really remember. So I'm going to open up the schema file, come here and you see we have task file, completed, project ID, description and title. What I usually do is I'll copy paste this and then come down here, paste it in and then I'll go with the ones I want. So I want to be able to accept a title a description. Uh, part of the reason I also like doing it this way, you may notice that when I pasted this in, Sublime Text actually recognizes all these and it gives me some really nice uh, autocomplete features. So I want to take the project ID, completed, and last one I want to take the task file for when we're actually going to get to integrate our file uploads. So save all that so we have our set task and our task params and you should also now have a good idea of what methods should be marked as private and which ones are publicly available just like all of these crud actions right up here